hear out of that tonight. Um, I was sitting over there thinking a little bit. That could be dangerous. But I was thinking February will be 17 years, uh, 16 years, since we moved into this church. And how many times I've walked up and here and back down in all those years. But every step brought me just a little closer to heaven. Amen. Amen. And we'll keep walking. <clears throat> well, Sam, I wish I had your voice tonight. I guess you can't own it to me, can you? <laughs> God is good, isn't he? Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the He's Lord. so great. Mitch and I were talking about what great service we had this morning. Yes. You know, the devil's trying to defeat us. Yes, but that ain't going to happen. Amen. Amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. Sorry, ain't going to happen. Nope. Um, talking about being here a long time. Sue and I were talking about clothes before church tonight. And I said, well, Midge and I are pretty frugal. We know I don't buy a lot of, you know what frugal means? Stingy. Uh, no, it's been wise, you know. And I said, uh, y'all like my new suit? Huh? That's the sharp thing. Y'all know how old that suit is? I didn't know myself, and I was going to show Sue how old it was, where it was made. You know, I thought J.C. Penney. I opened it up at Johnny Carson. Now, you all remember Johnny Carson. You know how long it's been since he's, been, he's had these suits out for sale. So, you know, it tears tonight. Don't think anything about it. But uh, I, look good in the, I look good in a burlap sack, so I don't worry about it too much. We'll have prayer meeting again over in the yonder. Uh, Wednesday night. Jim, would you lead that Wednesday night? Sure you will. Uh, if I say so, what else choice you got? <clears throat> All right, if, uh, tonight, I told Mitch, I said, you know, I was looking and this afternoon, I said, I didn't get finished this morning. She said, well, finish it up tonight. So maybe it won't take as long to finish as it did to get started. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but God is still on his throne. Don't ever forget that. Yeah, he, he sees. Uh, the fourth chapter of John, I'm not going to, uh, well, I might as well read it all <clears throat> and that I did this morning. Maybe some of you weren't here. Said, Beloved, believe not every, uh, fourth chapter of 1 John. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are, the, they are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, <clears throat> and the world heareth them. When I first got saved, I got saved in a church that shouted and old-fashioned altar, prayed through, and get the victory before you got up from it, know where you stood with God and everything. I didn't know much about it, but I assumed then that every church that I'd go to was like that. And there were a lot of them like that in the day. But I found out there was people who thought you were crazy in believing in an old-fashioned altar. And they said, what benefit is it? And so on. And they said, we don't have an altar in the church and all that. Well, an altar actually is in your heart. Uh, Jesus Christ is our altar. But as communion represents the blood of Jesus Christ, as the Bread represents the body of Christ. The altar represents coming to Christ. And that's what it's all about. There's no virtue in it, but it's a place, a meeting place for God. It's a meeting place where that you don't have to be in church to have an altar. You can be driving down the road and all of a sudden your steering wheel becomes an altar. And you can be out in the barn and pitching hay and all of a sudden a bale of hay can become your altar. You can just, wherever it is, you can make an altar out of a stump. 
And so this dedicated to God. It's like the food you eat. Eat it unto the glory of God. It, it, you know, it's not an offense. Eat it unto the glory of God. Whatever you drink, drink it unto the glory of God. Now, there's some things you can't drink unto the glory of God because it belongs to the devil. And so when it belongs to the devil, you can't dedicate it to God. It's impossible. Now, I don't know. Like I said I didn't know what whiskey tastes like, and I never had a drink in my life. But I hadn't had communion in Korea for a long time. And so I went to this uh, military service, this chapel and everything with this boy. He wasn't saved. I mean, he did about everything under the sun. But when they come to the time to take communion, I said, you know, I haven't had communion in a long time. And I would like to go up, even what kind of church it was, or dead is four o'clock. I said, I'd like to take communion. And so he went with me, and he took communion. And uh, we went back, and I said, that tasted kind of funny. He said, I want to tell you something, that was whiskey. And I... <laughs> I said, no, he said it was. He said, I drink, and I knew he drank. That's what he loved to do. And he said, I'm telling you, that's what it was. I cut to study and learn things, and something I didn't know because I was pretty naive and everything. And I found out that, that uh, certain denominations, and not putting any down or anything, but the Catholic Church served alcohol for communion. Well, I didn't know that then, you know, or I just kept my seat. But anyway, I did, and I guess it was. He said it was. But anyway, it got so, alcoholics got so bad coming into the Catholic Church to get a little bit of alcohol that they had to change it in places and take the alcohol and quit that and give them, uh, the fruit of the vine because the alcoholics were coming in just to get the al little bit of alcohol they could get. And I thought, wouldn't it be great if God's people would come into the church just to get a little bit of the Lord or a whole lot of the Lord, amen? I mean, the Spirit of God, that communion with God through the Holy Ghost, through the Spirit. You remember the day of Pentecost? After that, Jesus told them to tarry, go to Jerusalem and tarry on high because you will be endued with power from on high when you endure the, go there. And so they just packed up and went. On that day, they showed up. They're the same number of them that's supposed to be there. They went to the upper room and they did what God said to do. And I don't know what they were expecting. Brother, listen, I don't know what people are expecting today, but I do know one thing. God is still in the blessing business. The Holy Ghost is still in the convicting business. And the presence of a holy God can still separate us from sin and bring us to salvation. And we don't have to backslide every other day, but we can be in the holy presence of God because he that is in you is greater than he that's in the world. And the way that's living nowadays, you'd think the devil was greater. I just hate to hear people brag on the devil. Oh, the devil made me this and the devil made me that. The devil don't make you do one thing. He puts a temptation out there, but thank God if you're saved by the grace of God and the blood of Jesus Christ has blotted out your sin, you can turn your back on every bit of it and be an overcomer like John said we could because he that's in us is greater than he that's in the world. Now the Bible says to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Carnal mind and a spiritual mind cannot remain in the same head. That's all there is to it. Because if it remains in your 